what is going on you guys and welcome back to another video. In today's video we're gonna create a new transition using nothing but Luma Fusion and the transition looks like this. Now before you continue watching this video, let me know down in the comment section below which is your favorite transition of them all. Which is your favorite transition and is it possible to uh, figure out a way to create that using Luma Fusion? So you leave the comments and the transition down in the comment section below and I will try to figure out a way to create most of them if it's possible by doing so on the iPad. Now if you're brand new here on this channel, if this is the first time that you are are popping by really nice to see you welcome and it will be highly appreciated if you smash that subscribe button and the like button for the algorithm now with that said let's head over to the iPad and go through the process of creating the perfect zoom transition Previously, we made a pan transition and a whip transition using nothing but Luma fusion So in today's tutorial, we're gonna make a zoom transition now the first thing I'm gonna do is to go over to settings and make sure that the previous settings is set to best. The reason I'm doing this is to get a better picture quality when I make the transition so it's gonna be easier to see the lines when we combine the mirror edges to the image and also when we apply motion blur later on. Now once we have the preview set to best we're gonna decide how long we want the transition to last. So here you can play around with different lengths to find the zoom duration which is suited for you. This is the exact same as the previous video. Now the longer your clip is, the slower the transition will be and the shorter your clip is, the faster the transition will be. So for the pan transition we created, we used 15 frames and for the whip transition, we used 20 frames. Now for this, we're gonna use uh, one second or 24 frames since our timeline is 23.98 FPS Yes, that means 24 frames will be one second. So we're gonna change the duration of this to one second. Now once we're happy with that, we're gonna go straight into edit on the clip. Now once we're inside of frame and fit, we're gonna go to the beginning of the clip and we're gonna create a keyframe. Now the trick here is gonna be the same as the previous video where we created the whip transition. We're gonna start by slow movement and slow adjustments to begin with until we get closer to the middle of the clip. You can also follow along to see the numbers changing in the size area here and I'm also gonna do this by freehand. Now once you get used to doing the old transitions by freehand and not putting in the exact numbers under the size and position X and position Y, it's so much easier to create your own custom transition in different ways. Now once we get to the middle here, you can see that I have bigger changes between the keyframes. And the reason for this is that we want to create that easy curve transition going from uh, slow and then to fast and then from fast to slow as we get through the transition. Now as we get close to the final keyframe here and we are close to the middle of the duration, what I'm gonna do is to add one more here so we have a massive huge change of the last keyframe and then I'm gonna move one keyframe forward in time and for this I'm actually gonna zoom it in again so the picture is smaller as you can see here. Now the reason I'm doing this is to have a better working transition, creating everything in one one and single clip instead of creating one zoom in part and then sort of continue the zoom in part in a different clip, making it difficult to match up properly. So by doing this, we can have a super smooth transition and then make the cut exactly where we want to have it later on. Now, as we change the size of the next keyframe here, we're gonna do the same thing. It starts smaller and then we're gonna do bigger changes on the next keyframe and we're gonna go slower and slower and slower under the size changes as we get close to the end of the duration. Now you can also see that we are now having black bars around the entire image. Uh, we're gonna mirror the edges left and right here but on the top we need to add a cinematic bar and the reason for this is because we only have six layers in LumaFusion and to create a seamless mirrored image 
we would need nine layers or an effect which can mirror the entire image within the previous screen. At this point, we don't have that in LumaFusion, so the only way is to do this method and then add some cinematic bars to cover the black bars on the top and bottom. And you can decide yourself how big you want the cinematic bars to be by adjusting the size of the first keyframe when we are zooming this out. So if you want a very hard ending to the zoom, then you zoom the image further in and make it smaller, but that requires a bigger cinematic bar. So you can also play around with that to find your desired look for this type of zoom in transition. Now let's continue the keyframing here and I'm also doing this by freehand and as we get closer to the end here you can see that the size changes are getting smaller and smaller eventually getting to the point where it covers the entire previous screen. Now, once we're happy with the keyframing and the transition, we can go back out to the timeline here and we can scrub through and play through to see how it looks. Now, it will look a little bit weird because we only have one image, but we're gonna go on and we're gonna fix that right now. So the first thing we need to do is to select the layer and then make a duplicate. We're gonna go into edit on the layer and we're gonna flip the layer the other way so we create that mirror effect. Now, we're gonna flip that with the button right here. Now, after we flip the image, we can move to the first keyframe and we can drag that out of the frame. Now, we need to do this with the entire first part of the transition. So it's actually better to find the point where we have the black bars around the entire image, go to that keyframe and then go out to the timeline, make a cut and then delete the first part because we don't really need it. Now, once this is done, we can go back into edit here and go to the first keyframe. And since the image is now already flipped, we can drag it over to the right side or left side. We're gonna cover both sides anyway. So it doesn't matter which one you begin with. Now, as you can see here, the image is fairly dark and the background is black. So it's gonna be a little bit tricky to see the exact point where you need to match up the two clips. So a tip here is to go out to the timeline, then over to settings, and here you can find a background color. Tap on the black circle and you can now change the color of the background. So since this image is black, we're gonna choose the color white. Now, once we get back to edit, you can see it's a whole lot easier to match up the two clips and make it look seamless. Now, you can also follow the example here to see how I match the different clips and how I create this transition. So once we're done with the placement of the right side, we're gonna go over and do another duplicate and do the exact same thing to the left side.
Now once we're done with the left side, our transition is basically done. So the next step is to add some different clips. Now we're gonna go on and take the clip which is after and we're gonna make a cut of 10 frames or the amount of frames which is on the last parts of the transition. Now once we made the cut, we're gonna duplicate this three times and we're gonna take the top layer and place above the top layer of the transition which is on track number three. And we're gonna take the second one and place on second and we're gonna make a new cut to the bottom layer of the transition and then add the other image to that. Now after we place the clips, you can see our transition is now complete and we have a seamless transition. Now if we take a look at the end of the transition here, you can see that we still have some small white lines on the left and right side. And this is because we didn't adjust the last keyframe and we placed it too far outside of the previous screen. So we're gonna go on and we're gonna fix that now. So we're gonna go into edit on the top layer and we're actually gonna go to the last keyframe and we're gonna make sure that we position the image under position X at minus 200. Now for the other layer, which is on track number two, we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna position this on plus 200. So it matches the edge of the video, which is centered. Now once we've done this, we can move out to the timeline again and we can do a preview and you can see now the transition is fixed. So as a final touch, like I mentioned earlier in the video, we need to add a cinematic bar. Now this cinematic bar is a little bit too small, so I'm gonna go into edit on the text layer here and adjust it to make it a little bit bigger so it covers the white background. Now once we have the white background removed and our cinematic bars are set, we can do a playback to see how the transition looks. Now as a final touch, we also want to have some motion blur to sort of sell the effect. And once we added the motion blur to all our clips, the transition looks like this. So there you have one of the ways you can create a zoom in transition using nothing but Luma Fusion. There is also a bunch of zoom in and out transitions in the creators collection bundle. So if you want to check out that as well, there's a link down in the description below. Now I really hope that you enjoyed this video as well. Let me know down in the comment section below and uh, Whilst you're on the way down there, hit that subscribe button. That would be highly appreciated. Also the like button for the algorithm notification bell if you never wanna miss any future uploads and if you wanna be the first one down there commenting, you know, your thoughts. So that's gonna be the end of today's video. Make sure to comment down below and I will see you guys in a couple of days.